Now get a load of this. A red whirlwind sweeps along the coast of Australia and heads toward the nearest city. This tornado is unique not by its color, but by what is hidden inside it. These are great white sharks, hammerhead sharks, tiger sharks, and bull sharks. Shark! They fly inside the hurricane, snapping their jaws and trying to grab a piece of meat. People who look at this bizarre phenomenon from the outside think that they've got something in their drinks. But this is reality. A shark tornado can really exist? Or not? Yeah, let's find out. In 1877, a rather unusual tornado struck a farm in Southern California. About six small alligators about one foot in length fell from the sky that day. In 1894, a tornado traveled through England and dropped poisonous jellyfish on people. There's a version that tadpoles instead of jellyfish fell on the ground that day, but it still sounds quite strange. In Kentucky in 1876, there was a black humor rain. Hmm, doesn't sound funny to me. Pieces of meat fell from the sky. The locals tasted them and said it was like mutton or venison. However, later, birds discovered that a flock of buzzards had flown over that area. The birds felt unwell and regurgitated their lunch right in the air. And then, I assume, so did the locals who tried it. In 1947, fish fell from the sky in Marksville, Louisiana. In 2005, there was a rain that contained thousands of frogs in Serbia. In 2010, a small town in Australia was hit by a rain of perches. You know, fish. And now, imagine that all these strange phenomena were caused by one villainous corporation where evil geniuses work. And one of them is you. So you decide to make the most incredible natural cataclysm in history. A tornado of sharks. Or Sharknado. It seems like it's impossible, but you're going to try. Because you have nothing better to do. So first, we need to understand what a water spout is. It's a column of rotating air filled with clouds. This vortex occurs during a thunderstorm when warm air releases a large amount of heat. This heat becomes the energy that moves the rising air currents. This warm, moist air goes up and cold, dry air descends. The difference in temperatures preserves instability and helps tornadoes develop. When it forms over the water, a tornado becomes a water spout. It can draw in particles of seawater, some objects, and even fish. But everything depends on the strength of this vortex. You've probably seen it when tornadoes lifted cars into the air or tore the roofs off of buildings. There's a video on the internet where a tornado raises cows into the air. And an ordinary cow weighs about 1,400 pounds. Ooh. Now, in comparison, the great white shark is about 4,400 pounds. If a tornado could lift several cows, it could cope with a shark. But besides the great white one, there are tiger sharks, bull sharks, and hammerhead sharks. All of them weigh less. Therefore, there's no doubt that a tornado could possibly lift them into the air, too. Okay, now we can assume it's in the realm of possibilities. The next step is to create a real tornado. To do this, you need to heat the air and then make it rotate. The cold air will start to go down and you will get a whirlwind. One engineer from Canada named Lewis built devices that created tornadoes. He made several prototypes before assembling a real vortex engine. According to him, anyone can do it. However, these vortices were small. His device created thin jets of air that swirled and produced many tornadoes which then quickly dissipated due to strong winds. Lewis started developing this idea to get a new source of electricity. But he needed to create a giant vortex that would go into the sky to power several houses. He didn't have enough finances and opportunities to do this. But the place where you work has enough money to do it. You take the concept of the vortex engine and invest several million dollars. You build several large turbines that direct air to one point and then heat it with the help of a powerful generator. To give your tornado more destructive power, you electrify the atmosphere. You can control the tornado and change its direction using a special control panel. You little evil mad scientist, you! So you come to the coast of Australia, where there are many sharks of different species. To force them to gather in one place, you must throw several tons of minced meat into the water near the shore. Let me suggest that you don't do this by hand. 
The sharks immediately come there as soon as they smell the food. But there's a problem. These animals feel changes in the weather and don't approach the center of the storm. Therefore, to make sharks take risks, you need to make them angry and hungry enough. You go, Dr. Doofenshmirtz! (laughs) You spend millions of dollars to organize large-scale fishing. You throw huge nets into the water and, within a week, catch all the fish, shellfish, and other marine life that can become dinner for sharks. You move all the prey into giant aquariums and wait for the sharks to get hungry. A few days later, you notice many big fish congregating near the shore, looking for food. Then, you buy a couple of tons of ground beef from several butcher shops. You put it in a large container and lift it with the help of a helicopter. You dump the meat in a place where you see a lot of sharks. Lunch attracts fish within a one-mile radius. At this moment, a large ship with the tornado generator approaches the shore. Hey, can't quit now, right? You start the engines, and strong flows of warm air accumulate in the sky. Electricity flashes, and condensation creates rain. A powerful vortex begins to form in the sky. You control it and direct it towards the sharks. The whirlwind pulls pieces of ground beef from the water. The dust particles mix with the meat, and the tornado turns red. Oh, I think I'm gonna barf! You increase the strength of the wind and see how the sharks begin to rise into the air. More precisely, they jump out of the water to grab the meat, and the tornado picks them up. When several sharks are inside the vortex, you direct them toward the shore. People are running in horror. Some sharks fall back into the water, and some fall to the beach. The hammerhead shark falls right into the kitchen of a coastal restaurant and eats the whole menu. The shark is also a pig. You direct the Sharknado into the city. The storm lifts trees and cars into the air and rips off the roofs of houses. Some sharks fall down to the streets. People are running in different directions. The shark vortex passes through the city, scattering sharks. Of course, sharks don't crawl on the ground and don't try to eat people. They're just in shock and don't understand what's going on. Hey, what can I say? It's a PG Sharknado. Even in the ocean, sharks don't like to bite people. All attacks occur because sharks mistake them for seals or other sea creatures, which all look like food. Also, toothy fish can swim up to people out of curiosity. And now they're disoriented and having big breathing problems. Fish need a constant flow of water passing through their oxygen-extracting gills. Depending on the species, sharks can last without water for several minutes to an hour. At this moment, you realize that you have carried out not a villainous plan, but a stupid thing that has caused so many fish to suffer. Now, you need to fix everything. You have several helicopters that can transport the fish back into the ocean. But they're twitching and snapping their jaws in fear. Therefore, to calm them down, you use darts with sedatives. Then you help rescuers to fasten the sharks to the helicopters and lift them into the air. You have to get one fish out of an apartment on the seventh floor. Another shark was lying in the park. A hammerhead caused a big traffic jam on the road, and this tiger shark fell on a fire truck. Fortunately, they all have tough skin and strong muscles that protect them from damage. You pick up all the sharks and move them back to the ocean. No one and nothing has been hurt except for one thing, your reputation. You have failed your villainous plan and need to develop something new. This time, you'll create something that will really terrify people. You will invent a YouTube channel with nothing but ads. Alternate ending. You will invent a mega flood of spiders. Ew. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.